I don't know about you, but all this physics makes me hungry. Let's consider a nice hot bowl of soup and try and figure out which process cools the soup off most quickly. The choices are radiation. Presumably from the top of the bowl of soup, if the soup itself tries to radiate into the bowl, then it's probably going to bounce back and just heat the soup again. That'll be true once the soup has been in the bowl for a very small amount of time. So we'll assume radiation leaves out the top. There's also conduction. Now conduction is more likely to exit through the bowl. Conducting heat through air is not very efficient, but through some sort of earthenware bowl, we'll see how efficient that is. And the final process is convection. Convection involves fluid motion, so the soup itself may feature convection, but what we're really interested in is cooling off of the soup by the air above it. So you can have little convection cells where air rises up, takes heat away from the soup, and continues to cycle around to cool off the soup. So what we want to know is which of these three processes operates most quickly, meaning which has the largest power. Okay, so we need to make some assumptions. First, let's measure the soup. Let's say that the radius of the inner part of the bowl is 8 centimeters. We'll also eventually need the width of the bowl. Bowls are usually pretty thin, but how about a centimeter? So we'll need both of those. Certainly we need the temperatures. If the soup is at room temperature, if you're eating borscht, then it's not really going to cool off at all. It'll just stay at room temperature. But let's consider hot soup, where it's 363 Kelvin, and the air temperature might be 293 Kelvin. It's a little on the cool side, but hey, that's why you're eating soup. Now we need to estimate some physical parameters, some of which are obvious and some of which are less so. Soup emissivity. Okay, that's not usually quoted on the label, but soup is mostly water. I'm going to guess that the emissivity of soup is about 0.9. You would have to be given this in a problem. What about the thermal conductivity of a bowl? Well, this I was able to look up. If you assume, again, that the bowl is something like earthenware, then 0.8 watts per meter Kelvin is not inappropriate. Now, conductivity can vary a lot, but you imagine that bowls probably are not very high conductivity. You don't want people burning themselves if they pour hot soup into a bowl. The final thing we'll need to know is the convection heat transfer coefficient. This is H, and this varies a lot. It really depends on what's going on with the air in the room and whether or not the room is full of air. In this case, if you're eating soup, it's probably in a room full of air. I'm going to assume that you're not blowing across the top of the soup. We don't really want the soup to cool off. So 10 watts per meter squared Kelvin is a reasonable assumption. Really, these values are just intended to give us kind of an order of magnitude estimate of the powers associated with the various cooling processes. Okay, so let's consider radiation out the top of the soup bowl first. The expression for radiation is QE dot equals epsilon sigma A times T to the fourth. Now you'll see that there are two temperature terms here. This is actually for a situation where you have something radiating, but it's also surrounded by some large object that could potentially be radiating also. Since we're in a room full of air, let's go ahead and assume that the air is also radiating. Now, T is raised to the fourth, so you can imagine that the soup temperature is going to dominate this expression, and that's fine. We'll just put this in as an example. So what is the area in this case? Well, remember, we said the radiation was escaping out of the top of the bowl. So the area really ought to be pi r squared, where r is the radius of the soup, so 8 centimeters. So now we can just plug in all of our values, right? Because we know the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. We said epsilon was 0.9. We just said the area was pi r soup squared. And we know the two temperatures. So let's put everything in carefully and multiply out. And we'll get an expression that should be in watts at the end, right? You can see that the Kelvin to the fourth power will cancel. And we get out that the radiative power associated with a hot bowl of soup is about 10.3 watts. Our goal now is to compute powers for the other two heat transfer processes and just see, relatively speaking, how large they are compared to one another. All right, the next process that we will consider. Let's do conduction next. So this is thermal conduction, and it involves the thermal conductivity, kappa, and area, and then dt dx, and we'll have to talk about how to correctly assess that. So the area for conduction. Well, I assumed that this was a hemispherical bowl, just to make our lives a little bit easier. Now we're conducting to the inner part of the bowl, so the area should be half the total surface area of a sphere, so 1 half times 4 pi r squared. And the radius here is the radius of the soup. Remember, that's where the conduction is occurring. It's not on the outside of the bowl. We're going to assume that the outside of the bowl is still at room temperature. Now this is probably the most controversial part of our calculations because I'm assuming that the interior part of the bowl is at the temperature of the soup. So the soup's been in there long enough to heat up the very inner part of the bowl. 
and I'm assuming the outer part of the bowl is at the temperature of air. Now, if you wait long enough, certainly you can imagine that dt dx will change, right? If the soup ends up heating up the bowl to the soup temperature, suddenly conduction goes away completely. But for now, I'm assuming it's just been in long enough to heat up the very inner part of the bowl and not the outer part at all. We'll also assume that dt dx is constant. Now, this is not guaranteed by any means. We're doing this to simplify our lives so that we can make it into a delta t delta x because we don't know what else to do at this point. So if we do that, dt dx becomes t soup minus t air. Going in the same direction, we'll pick a delta x of 0 centimeters minus 1 centimeter. So we're going from the inner part of the bowl to the outer part of the bowl. That'll turn out to be important because we want to get the sign right on dt dx, mostly so that it cancels out the minus sign in the conduction equation. So now we put in all of our values including our expression for dt dx, and we have to be careful. We want to work in meters here instead of centimeters, so we need to have that last conversion step too. So we simplify things a little bit, and we're expecting to get out watts at the end, which we do. Multiply all of that out, and we get 225 watts. It's a pretty large power. One way to put it into perspective is to compare that to a 100 watt incandescent bulb, so we're over twice that just cooling off soup by touching the bowl. Okay, the final process that we're going to deal with is convection, and as I indicated before, the convection heat transfer coefficient is probably the most approximate value in this problem. That's okay. So this is the expression for convection, and again, it has to do with the difference in temperatures. If the soup ended up being the same temperature as the air, there would, of course, be no relevant convection, no net heat transfer. So the relevant area here for convection, well, it has to be the top again, right? Because we're not convecting out through the bowl. The bowl is solid. It can't convect. Parts of it can't move around. What we need is some fluid to transport heat away, and the fluid in this case is the air above the soup. So the relevant area is just pi r squared, where, again, we're picking pi r soup squared. We know h. We know the two temperatures, so let's plug in our values. And after simplifying things, we should end up with a final power of 14.1 watts. So just to be clear, that's from convection. The power associated with conduction was 225 watts, and the power associated with radiation was 10.3 watts. So clearly, in this case, conduction is by far the most efficient process. It has the largest power. That means that conduction is cooling off the soup the most. Now, that story might change if the bowl heats up enough that the efficiency of conduction drops, namely the difference between the two temperatures drops. But for now, when we've just put the soup in the bowl and it's only had time to heat the inner part of the bowl, conduction wins hands down.